What's going on, Ambitious Vet? Thanks for diving inside the trenches with us again this week as we seek to provide you with the golden grenades you need to get yourself out of your own way and fuel your desire to make an impact post-military. This is your podcast built by veterans for veterans as we dive into the trenches with today's top subject matter experts, share inspiring transition stories, and provide master classes to simply equip you to reach your full potential. Bottom line is, this is your place to go after immediate transition education expires. Um, but I think the key indi- indicator is energy level. And when you're in your strength zone, when you're in your doing the thing that you were born to do, you have unlimited energy almost. Today's show is going to be brought to you by Steezy Socks. Did you know that right now, student athletes in your neighborhood could have all the talent in the world, but lack the resources to continue to fund their skill progression and their desired sport? Kind of like uh, you having the talents, getting out of the military and not having financial backing to have the peace of mind to realize them. So we end up falling into entry level security jobs or first responder positions because it's just easy right? I think you get the point. Uh, Steezy is a veteran-owned business based in San Antonio, Texas. They wanted to create a company that revolved around truly aiding student-athletes in need while supplying the highest quality materials you've experienced in a sock. They're more than just a sock company. They created Steezy to disrupt the meaning of change. I want you to visit steezysocks.com and Ambitious Vet, if you see anything that you like on there, make sure you use AVN Alpha Victor November for an additional 20% off all purchases. Again, also each socks sold aids a student athlete in need. So make sure you get out there, do your part, and continue to fuel missions that are way bigger than yourself. It's time to get into the trenches, dig, dig into your purpose, and Fire up your life fulfillment. The Ambitious Vet Podcast starts now. What's going on, Ambitious Vet? We are right back inside the church this week with Scott Mackies. He has a a dedicated his career to supporting the success of fellow military veterans interested in building new businesses. He's the founder of Service Academy Business Mastermind Group and 10X Vets. Um, combined, he has been able to build a worldwide community of military veterans who share resources, information, insight, and professional guidance to advance business ideas and opportunities through a trusted network. Scott is also the founder of strengthmugs.com, an online shop where he sells products related to Gallup Strength Finder assessment. Since launching strength uh, strengthmugs.com in 2016, uh, they have shipped thousands of uh, strength mugs to individuals and organizations around the world. We're super excited to have Scott on the show. Scott, are you there? I'm here, Chris. Hear you loud and clear, man. Good. To, thanks for having me on today. Oh, it's absolute pleasure. I think I butchered your last name. How do how do you pronounce your last name? No, nah, man, you were. I think you're pretty close. It's it's Macus. So Macus. That's, I think that's what you said. So uh, I get Mackies sometimes and <laughs> Max, but uh, Scotty Mac. That was my nickname back in the day when I played baseball. Uh, so, <laughs> but last name is Macus. But thanks so much, Chris, for having me on the show and. and uh, Congrats on on the community that you've built. Really ex- exciting to have have connected with you. Uh, you know, maybe a month, three or four weeks ago, and excited to be on your podcast today. Yeah, no, I mean uh, it's guys like you, Scott, that have kind of paved the way for uh, young guys like me. Uh, you know, just trying to figure out that golden, you know, golden brick road um, to the the chocolate factory. So thank you uh, for that acknowledgement. But uh, the communities that you've built. Um, the deals that you're working on nowadays is what us young guns um, getting out of the uniform strive to do. So go ahead and fill the uh, gaps inside that introduction and let the ambitious vet that's listening to this know a little bit more about you. Uh, sure. Yeah. So uh, I went, I grew up in Maryland. I live in Charleston, South Carolina today. So happy to, you know, connect with anybody that, you know, lives uh, here locally in the Charleston area, but uh, served in, in the Navy as a surface warfare officer from 2001 to 2006. Uh, 
all of the ships I was on are pretty much razor blades or we sold about sold them to Turkey or <laughs> all decommissioned. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I got out in 2006 after five years, went to business school, uh, served in the corporate world in the, in the, uh, construction industry for 10 or so years. And then gosh, probably around 2010, it's like, I don't really want to work for somebody for the rest of my life. And, <laughs> mm. you know, and, uh, you know, a, a business school kind of ignited a passion in, in business in me. Like when I went to the Naval Academy, there weren't any business classes. And so I was always good at math and, you know, and so kind of, you know, took a lot of engineering classes at the Academy, but never took a business class until I was 26 you know, in business school. And that's when I was like, man, this is, <laughs> this is a way I can apply my math skills and make money. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was exciting to me. But um, anyway, so, you know, and then my first venture was strengthsmugs.com. I'm very passionate about Gallup's Clifton Strengths Assessment. And I even went through their coaching certification course, uh, which uh, I did maybe, gosh, 2014, I think it was. And so I was like one of the first 100 folks to go through that. And just because I was excited about how helpful that assessment was to me, you know, I was trying to figure out <laughs> what I wanted to do with my life, you know, as, and as a lot of folks, you know, kind of find themselves in that spot. And, and the Clifton Strengths assessment was really helpful to me. I got to learn about my superpowers and, and, it's like, man. And so I wanted to learn more about it. So I went through the, the certification course and uh, which is kind of geared towards coaching. Uh, but the kind of the business idea that, that I got from that was selling coffee mugs with people's top five strengths. And so, <laughs> so people nice. take the assessment and Hey, they need to be able to remember their strengths. So <laughs> I, I set up a Shopify store and back in 2016 and, um, and it worked like people like right that same day, like as soon as we launched the store, we're ordering the mugs and, and then fast forward six years later, you know, we're still shipping out mugs, you know, at least, at least every other day to new customers. And, and so that's been a lot of fun. So that was kind of the first venture that got me started, gave me confidence in mm. that I could, I wasn't a complete idiot, you know, when it came to <laughs> like creating a product and trying to sell it to someone. And, you know, there's a few things before that, but that was the first thing that worked um, that was successful. And then kind of from there, I just saw the need at first, just within my own service Academy community for uh, people that were what that were starting businesses. And so I started the service Academy business mastermind five years ago. And um, kind of leveraging technology like Zoom calls and podcasting to connect, you know, service academy grads that were building businesses uh, still do that today. And, and kind of from that initial venture, um, we've launched different other other programs, which have kind of become brands of their own. So 10X Vets is one of them. Um, we started that about a year and a half ago. We've got over 100 military veteran business owners in 10X Vets. And we started an investment fund called the Academy Fund, where we're doing mm -hmm. short-term uh, lending to military veteran real estate operators. So since launching that over, the la over about a year and a half ago, we've done uh, $15 million in loans. And, uh, you know, and so it's kind of cool. It's kind of like a, a vehicle that connects the rich guys with the, you know, the, <laughs> that are accredited investors, you know, and doing pretty well that don't want to, you know, do all the legwork with, you know, trustworthy, high integrity, military veteran real estate professionals who are, you know, built, growing their real estate businesses. And, you know, some people are, you know, doing smaller deals like fix and flips or rehabs and, you know, other folks, you know, have been in the game a long time and are doing, as I mentioned before we hit record, you know, we're looking at a $13 million deal right now, just outside awesome. of Austin. So, mm. uh, but it's fun, man. So that's kind of, you know, a cliff notes of the, uh, <laughs> the last, whatever, 20 years since I got out of the, uh, the Academy. So. 
No, that's incredible. And, uh, you know, $13 million deal in Austin. Austin is booming. A lot of people are moving to Austin and it's so cool to just be working on a deal where a heavy dense of uh, us Californians are kind of, you know, migrating to and uh, stuff like that. So uh, if you are a veteran in California and you, uh, you know, are in real estate, you know, real estate professional looking to tie the dots and uh, loans, funding, uh, for potential deals, make sure you reach out to uh, Scott and his team. They're doing some amazing work. Um, and uh, one of our advisors and people that we associate with on a monthly basis are tied into multiple or one of his uh, community groups that he has. So I encourage you to get in there, network, build relationships with other people um, that know, like, and trust each other, because that's kind of how you accelerate stuff. Um you know, Scott, the one thing that we were talking about and our, our pre-interview, man, is just like, yeah, you fast forward, you know, strength mugs for, for Marines like myself to forget our strengths, right? You know, we get that right in front of us to be like, okay, where does my, uh, you know, locus of control, um, rather my focus point down range. Um, you know, you did that, you launched some other community groups are now doing, you know, $13 million deals in Austin, Texas, but, you know, f- you know, going backwards, um, you know, there was a lot of potential failures, I'm sure, and pivots along the way, which you've already kind of touched on a, on a high point with, uh, the strength mugs after getting certified, right. And being a value add to that certification, which is, uh, you know, brilliant. And, uh, yeah, I just would love to kind of hear like, you know, what kind of golden grenades would you have for an ambitious vet that's looking to kind of change the relationship to failure and uh, knowing when to pivot? Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times when, you know, you come on a podcast or you're talking with folks, it's like you're the highlight reel, right? (laughs) I think it's more fun to talk about the stuff that didn't work and the lessons learned. And, uh, And so there was a lot of stuff, especially at the beginning that, man, I was kind of, kind of struggling, man. And I just, I just think I'm thinking back to 2008, 2009, 2010, and like driving to work every day and like listening to podcasts and like really like latching onto them, like listen, like, you know, and just trying to surround myself with other entrepreneurs because at my day job, like there were no entrepreneurs. It was like people that are, you know, working for this company, like, you know, punching the clock every day. And it's like, man, I really need to surround myself with people that, you know, that are kind of, that have achieved something that I want to achieve. So it was like listening to audiobooks, like Jim Rohn and mm. like listening, you know, you know, <laughs> yeah. Napoleon Hill, like there was some rare, like recording of him talking. I forget what the name of the name of it was, but I had like these like 12 CDs and I'd listen to these CDs like every day, like on the way to work, on the way home, like over and over Mm. uh, combined with podcasts and just surrounding myself, even if it was just like through the, the airwaves or whatever, like the speakers, like through my car, like, you know, (laughs) that, that was kind of the point where I was like, I knew I wanted to change my, the, my situation. I wanted to change my environment. And the, kind of the first step was just, just, just consuming as much information, you know, from those types of people as I possibly could. Um, you know, I went down, you know, when you're, when you're trying to do something outside of your day job, like you've got limited time, you know, like after five weekend nights and weekends, basically. Right. And so I kind of started with a, it's like, oh, maybe I could like start a coaching business and help people. And, you know, and which was fun, you know, I kind of, I did like some one-on-one calls. There was one, at one point I was coaching college kids on their Clifton Strengths assessment. Like, so they take the assessment and I get paid, I get paid like, I don't know, 50 bucks for like an hour call or something. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. It was kind of, it was, that was re- the beginning, man. It was like yeah. the beginning of creating some sort of way that people pay me like outside of my, you know, W2 income. So I did, I, <laughs> I did that for a little while. Um, that kind of, all of that led me to the, like wanting to learn more about the Clifton Strengths assessment, you know, because it, that was just kind of going back to that point, that was really valuable to me. And so that's kind of where my coaching business, the direction that that went in. 
But then I was like, man, in coaching, it's like you're trading your time for money, you know, and like, how do you ever become wealthy doing that? And so that's kind of where the idea with strengths mugs is like with strengths mugs, man, I can throw up, put up an online store, you know, I can have a print shop, print the mugs for me. I'm not printing these things. Like, so I found a print shop to do that. And, you know, I, that's kind of for when Shopify first hit the scene. So it was relatively inexpensive to create an online store with Shopify. And um, yeah, man. So that was, you know, and that was much more fun than coaching college kids on their Clifton Strengths assessment for fifty dollars an hour. You know, <laughs> <laughs> plus you got mailbox money, you got passive income once you yeah. got the everything set up, which is you know obviously probably your definition of building wealth. I'm sure. I'll tell you what, Chris. So, so, so starting a coaching business, and for, there's a lot of. I mean, I I really believe in coaching. I do a lot of coaching just just with 10x vets. You know, as far as just one on one calls, I don't charge people per hour to talk with me, but Hey man, like if we need to talk through something, let's hop on a call. Um, that's a really tough business to build, you know, and it's really comes down to like having a very narrow niche in, or like a very specific expertise. And, um, like when I was first starting, I was like, Oh, like I'll work with anybody, college kids and other classmates from the academy and people Whoever's that want to money. do a, a yeah. career change or somebody that wants to start a business. <laughs> and it was like, like crickets, man, because it was like, you're always, tr- you know, trying to be something for everybody. And, you know, through that experience though, I built my marketing chops. Like I built, I realized, Hey, the riches are in the niches. And when I launched strengths mugs, like that's a niche, like people that go to the hit, the website strengthsmugs.com and they haven't taken the Clifton Strengths assessment, it's like Chinese to them. And that's fine. You know, that's that's perfectly fine because the people that have taken the assessment and, and get it, like love it. They're like, oh my God, like coffee mugs with your top five strengths, like totally cool. Right. Mm. And um, so the riches are in the niches. That was a, a big lesson learned after fumbling around for a couple of years. Uh, I started a podcast called success starts Sunday. <laughs> and this one, it sounds so, cool. It sounds like something you'd want to attend if you're ambitious though, right? It's maybe. Just like, or yeah. like somebody might think it's about like, you know, church or something like who knows. Right. So, True. so, so for a year I, I did this podcast called success start Sunday and man, I was, I'd be like, it was like, I would record it on Sundays and it would, I would talk about some sort of a probably something I read in a book or something like the week before, <laughs> or just something that was, you know, that was success related. And, you know, I, I was, I had good, good intentions. I like wanted to help people and that sort of thing. And like, I did it for a year and maybe when I launched my second pot, but I, then I just stop. I'm like, this is draining my energy. It's, I, I don't think it's really serving me. And I stopped, which is, I think it's hard to do that sometimes when mm. you were, a veteran or you're, you know, you went to an academy or whatever, like you, you're goal oriented. You're like, I can't quit mission driven. Yeah. But some, but sometimes that's the, that's the, uh, the best thing you can do because it frees up energy for the next idea. And so I stopped that. I took a break for five or six months and I came up with uh, that's when I came up with the idea for the service Academy business mastermind, which I launched with a podcast, but I had spent a year you know, I found my audio person and I knew how to do a Mm. podcast. I just had to do one for a very specific audience. And so when I did launch the first service Academy business mastermind podcast, I had Tyler Merritt was my guest. He started nine line apparel. So I had a, you know, pretty good guest and, um, dude, I fired, I knew where to find the audience because I'm one of them. Right. So I built, you know, a, 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 you know, an email list and I emailed this podcast out to people and dude, I got more downloads on like the first (laughs) SABM podcast than I did for the whole year of success start Sunday. Um, but that, but success start Sunday was like, was the, the training gym for me. You Mm -hmm. know, it was the uh, building my muscles, building my marketing muscles, um, figuring out a system. And then I just needed the right idea in order Mm -hmm. for that kind of, you know, so, so don't quit the vision, but it's okay to quit the strategy. So my Mm. vision was, 
you know, to build a, a business to, to build, not, not just a business, but to build a business that had purpose where I'm serving people that I really love talking with and helping. And so that was kind of my overarching vision, but you know, the strategy to get there is, is there's been a number of pivots for sure over the last, yeah. yeah however many years. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, Scott, you're you're filled with wisdom, man, and uh, just the community you've built and uh, the e-commerce, uh, you know, business that you've built is very impressive. One thing that you asked, you know, you said that you asked yourself, and I think it's super important to highlight here, is knowing when to pivot. Like you asked yourself, is this really serving me now? And I'd love to kind of just hear more about that. Like um, when you ask your when you asked yourself that question in that moment, um, what was kind of your qualification or criteria. And I think that's just super important for an ambitious vet listening to this being like, huh, is this really serving me now? That's a good question for anybody to ask themselves at yeah. any stage of wherever they're at in life. And I think the key indicator is, is the energy you're getting from an activity. And I, I asked that from my, to myself today, you know, I'm like, Hey, is this last 30 minutes I've you know spent doing this thing, like serving me or not serving me? And, and it's, it's all about the energy. And so that's, it's just, a, it's, that's just a kind of a true indicator of, um, you know, are you doing the thing you were born to do and going back to the Clifton strengths assessment, right? Those things, those words that are in your top five, like those strengths, like for me, it's like competition and includer and futuristic and achiever. And, um, mm. and so those are the things that give me energy. Like when I'm out like competing, when I'm including and, you know, building a community and doing those types of things, things that are might be futuristic or um, that involve some sort of having a vision, like that's what gives me energy. And that assessment helped me understand that, but that's, but when I'm not in my strength zone and I'm doing things that like are draining my energy, that's when it's time to, and some of those things are important. You know, you can't just stop doing them, but you can hand them off to a teammate. Uh, if you're, if you're a business owner, if you're not a business owner, like it's, you know, I don't know, <laughs> you gotta just, if you're working for somebody, you know, maybe that's just your job. Maybe you've got to change roles, you know, mm -hmm. to find something that you'd rather do. Um, but I think the key indi indicator is energy level. And when you're in your strength zone, when you're in your doing the thing that you were born to do, you have unlimited energy almost. Hmm. And so, so for me, that was, um, and so back to the podcast, like, and sometimes the format's just not right. You know, I was talking to myself for 15 minutes <laughs> on these things. Like I hate doing, I don't know if you've ever done a podcast where you were just the only one talking, like some people love it, you know, yeah. I hate it. And so I didn't like the format. Um, but when I started involving guests and, you know, we were having a conversation and the guests were people that I had a lot in common with that who had really cool stories. It was just much more fun. Like I don't even, I literally don't even prepare for hardly for the podcast anymore. I think we were talking about this like yeah. a couple weeks ago. That was <laughs> it was just like crazy to me. It's, it's just crazy. Fun. It's like we hit record, we start talking. I've got a general idea of the direction we're going to go and, but there's a lot of surprises too. And that's what makes it fun. Hmm. And and I've got more energy at the end of the conversation than I did at the beginning. And so um, anyway, so, so I think, you know, pivot when something's not giving you, serving you, giving you energy anymore. And, you know, by pivot, you could just completely change direction or you could just maybe hand off if, you know, if it's a task that's draining you, hand it off to somebody else. That's great. That's great. You seem like an incredible delegator, but also I can see how like this, um, this 10 X vets and this other, you know, community groups that you've developed comes from the includer strength too, right? Like you were been able to kind of include and bring people together and create opportunities from a community level and be like, a, you know, kind of like a catalyst, right? Bring connecting the dots in other words. Right. And can kind of give you the energy, but, you know, to your point, you know, doing, doing content alone. Yes. I mean, from 2017, while I was still in the corporate world all the way to 2019, I was doing weekly Facebook live videos inside the Ambush Fit Network Facebook group and once a week, okay. and it was called the passion driven tip of the week. You can okay. literally go back to the Facebook group and see the weekly content. And it was weird, man. 
It was weird because I'd be live and I'd be looking, you know, be like, hey, let me know if you're live with me. And there'd be like one person go down there. I'm live, man. I'm from Arizona. You know what's going on? <laughs> and uh, it's like eventually to your point, it kind of gets to a point where it's like, all right, man, I'm spitting out all this, this, this opinion on stuff. But what could what could have it be more entertaining or more fun and stop being fun? You know, what I mean, so I just kind of shut off the hose a little bit um, and we kind of pivoted into the podcast where we can bring brilliant minds like yourself on. Um, but, yeah, I mean, one thing I want to kind of just, you know, kind of pull out of you a little bit, Scott, is, um, you know, relationship to failure. Right. Uh, what you learned from your relationship to failure, because I, I hear like marketing chops, building that niches are in the riches. You pivoted, started making more money than $50 an hour charging college kids to figure out their strengths. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't and, think I've ever uh, told anybody that. I mean, and honestly, like on a pot, it's certainly not on a podcast, but I just remembered that as we were talking, <laughs> was uh, like, cool. <laughs> that was funny. But that it was first, fun. the first dime you make off like something you're producing is a huge self-worth builder, man. I, I feel just like, oh my gosh, people are going to pay me for my, me. So it's, it's good. But what was like, what were some other things that you learned from failure? If there was just one more golden grenade you had there? Yeah. Yeah. So let's think. Um, I'll tell you what, something that was kind of successful that I stopped doing was uh, I started this Amazon store. Uh, it wasn't a store, but I started selling products on Amazon and my wife and I, we love the Zach Brown band, man. So we were like going to shows and I noticed people had these clear bags that they were taking into the stadium because like they're of the clear bag policy. I was like, Oh, I wonder, you know, if I could sell clear bags and how, how are people buying them? And I found that, you know, people go to Amazon and they buy their, these clear bags and it's kind of a niche. And it's like, Oh, let me, I wonder if I can find, a way to sell these on Amazon and find a manufacturer, you know, and all of that and try to piece this thing together. So, uh, so I started called it like fan bags. So, <laughs> I was, so I found this, this manufacturer in China and I'd order like 500 bags at a time. And I wanted to like have a nice bag that I forget what it looked like, but it had like a shoulder strap and you could also carry it and whatever. And it had a couple of different pockets and so I'd order, I, we came up with the design and I'd order like 500 at a time and they would, you know, show up in my driveway and, you know, in a giant box and I'd like put them in my basement and then I'd ship them off to Amazon, like, you know, and, and people would buy them. Like I was selling like 20 a day or 30 a day or whatever. And there was a, a market for that. Hmm. Uh, and, but man, it drained my, my, the living life out of me for whatever reason. Like I just didn't care about the, the customer, like not that I didn't care about the person, but I just didn't care about the need of, to have a clear bag going into a stadium. Like there's mm -hmm. no purpose behind this entire business, except that, you know, I bought them for, for $5 and I'm selling them for 15. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that was kind of an issue. The other issue was that like I could easily be ripped off. Like, so Amazon came out with like an Amazon basics bag that looked like mine and they just undercut me on price and, you know, and then COVID hit, but I had stopped doing it like a, maybe a year or two before COVID. And then that business completely died. Right. Mm. Cause nobody's going to stadiums anymore. Boring events or anything. Yeah. But the writing was kind of on the wall where it, that was just draining me. You know, I just got tired of, you know, having to deal with it. And I just stopped. And so sometimes like something on the outside could look like you are successful, but on the inside, it's like, man, there's like no, <laughs> no heartbeat to this thing, you know? Yeah. So let's, let's pivot, you know, because and again, it goes back to the energy that you're feeling from something and, you know, whether that's, it's serving you or not. And, and so that was an example um, of something that I started that did work, you know, it did, you know, it was, you know, that was somewhat profitable, but I just stopped doing it because it was just a distraction. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, a pandemic hit and no one was going out and uh, you know, that might be a good deciding factor as well. Right. And uh, <laughs> I definitely know the feeling of Amazon and 
selling an ebook on there and kind of how much they take on the back end and just all that. It's, it can be a difficult marketplace to compete inside of. So Scott, um, I want to kind of sum this all up, right. With one last golden grenade and then give you an opportunity to, uh, you know, have an ambitious vet that's listening to this, learn more about who you are and next sure. steps as far as getting integrated with to next vets and other initiatives that you're up to maybe a real estate professional that's you know an ambitious vet that's looking hey i want to get into these deal flows that they're in um before we get there um there's an ambitious vet that listens to this show on a weekly basis that's uh been out for a few years realized that immediate transition education has expired i'm talking about resume writing interview prep job fairs stuff like that got them a sense of stability, but they're looking at, hey, how do I reach my full potential post-military? What would be one last golden grenade that you would provide to that ambitious vet? Yeah, that's a great question, Chris. And so my my uh, advice is that that you are your best investment, right? And so when I was in my day job and, you know, sending money, you know, into my 401k, into like, which is ultimately investing in like what mutual funds or whatever, you know, basically I'm sending my money to other people, even though I kind of, you know, it's my 401k or whatever, but the highest returns that I've ever gotten is when I invested in myself. And so that strengths coaching to become a Gallup certified strengths coach, it might, it might sound like silly. It certainly sounded silly like six years ago or seven years ago today, there's a lot more Gallup coaches and, Um, but what's the ROI on that? Like, how do you even calculate it? Especially when there's not, there's less than a hundred people that are actually have gone through this program. And so it was like a kind of a risk to, to invest in that program. I mean, I think it cost me like $7,500 and I flew like, you know, had to fly to Omaha, Nebraska and stay in a hotel for three or four nights and, you know, take up, take that time off of work. And so, Mm. you know, it was like 10 grand at the end of the day. And, um, with no, like, what's the ROI? Like, I don't know. You know, I know that if I invest this in like a S and P 500 index fund, you know, maybe I'll make 10% or something, or, you know, today, maybe I'll lose 10%, you know, with the way the market is, but you know, I'm not going to lose everything. So, but if you think about kind of that 10 grand investment, like I make that every single year. I mean, it's Strengths Mugs is a, a side hustle. It's not a you know a huge e-commerce company, but it's a you know passive income side cut hustle. And I make that at least that every single year. I've since then selling these mugs, you know, online. Like so, so you never know how the money is gonna come back to you. And I think just being open to like different ways that you know it could multiply. Um, but you are your best investment. And I, and I would say if you're, there's something that you have a hunch that you should do and in, in, in a way that, you know, a course that you could take or a certification or whatever, you know, invest in yourself first before you give the money to somebody else, because that money is, has the potential to a thousand X or 10,000 X and, and then, help you realize your full potential because, you know, cause there's something inside of you that's calling you to do something. And if it costs money to do it, man, just do it. Right. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and, uh, and so that's, that was kind of my parting shot, I think is that was a game changer for me. And it kind of showed the universe that I was serious about making a change. And I wrote a check, invested it in myself. And then, you know, here I am. You know, however, however many years later, so eight, eight years later, since kind of going through that initial Gallup certified strengths coaching course, which I totally loved it, like totally loved being there mm-hmm. and got so much out of it. Um, but it was really the first time that I invested in myself in such a way that was a little bit outside of the box. That's cool. And the, the, the thing to hear there is, uh, get out of the box, get out of the box, get out of the fob, you know, leave the wire and, uh, you know, just get out there and, uh, you know, do as Scott was saying is just get out there and, uh, find a way to, uh, invest in yourself. Right. It sounds like it's been a guiding post that $10,000 has been a guiding post for his future decision-making on pivoting into other business opportunities from those core strengths that he was able to establish. And, uh, Scott, 
I just want to throw this back over to you. Ambush Fet is listening to this right now. Where can they go to find out more about you or where do you want them to go next? Yeah. So the, the, I would say for the folks that are, that own a business or even if they have a, even if you have a side hustle, you know, uh, 10x vets is something that's, I think, worth checking out. Uh, it's just the number 10xvets.com. And uh, if you'd like to check out the investment fund, academyfund.com is another place to go if you're in need of, you know, real estate financing, you know, kind of short term financing for a real estate project, or you'd like to invest and support veterans, academyfund.com. And, uh, and then LinkedIn, you're welcome to happy to connect with, with folks on, on LinkedIn as well. Perfect, Scott. Well, hey, man, I just want to say thank you for joining the show. What you're doing is absolutely amazing. And thank you for just being a catalyst for ambitious vets to get out there and speed up where they are to where they want to go in business and just leadership. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Chris, for all you do. Thanks for having me on today. The Ambitious Vet is available on all popular podcast platforms. Go to vettrainingcoaching.com to subscribe, rate, and share with fellow vets. Today's show is going to be brought to you by Steezy Socks. Did you know that right now, student athletes in your neighborhood could have all the talent in the world, but lack the resources to continue to fund their skill progression in their desired sports? It's kind of like you having the talent getting out of the military and not having financial backing to have the peace of mind to realize you know, those talents because you will get pushed into entry-level security or first responder positions to just make life easier, don't you? I know I did. Uh, but Steezy here, this is a veteran-owned business based in San Antonio, Texas. They wanted to create a company that revolved around truly aiding student-athletes in need while supplying the highest quality materials you've experienced in any sock. They're more than just a sock company. They created Steezy to disrupt the meaning of change. I want you to go visit steezysocks.com and use code AVN, Alpha Victor November for an additional 20% off all purchases. Cool thing is each sock sold aids a student athlete in need ambitious vet can't stress about it enough continue to go and fuel other ambitious vets missions and watch how the world comes back and reciprocates your value add take care